All right, guys. Um, I think we may be running out of text soon, by the way. So last time we got to, when it became night, they prepared the bed for, well, for our two gods, right? Or for the two. It just says, uh, Empasa Snow, uh, Empasa Snow for the for the two prisons, so to say. And I think that's where we left off the last time. Um, content warning. So now we're getting to the section of Rose and Seth that everybody's talk, talking about with letters and whatnot. So uh, non-suitable for work um, or 18 plus. So I don't know what else. Um, what uh, has happened so far, so they've tried it all possible different ways, right? So you had fight it out in court, uncle versus son. Not clear who should be getting getting um, sh should inherit the office of the father. Then they tried appeal to authority, right? To several senior gods, get their their uh, recommendation, and they just can't agree on anything. Next, they tried a endurance test: who can stay the longest underwater? Because that's how grown ups figure out who should get what, right? So that didn't didn't work. Then because of uh, ISIS interfering. Then Seth tries beating up Horus and takes his eyes out. But again, one of the gods interferes and makes Horus whole again, so that fails. So you've, you've tried pretty much every trick in the book. So what's the next one? Next one is slander. What's the next thing you can do, just like in politics? If you can't beat the guy legally, try something completely different. I'm not sure that justifies what Seth is about to do, but um, maybe that's the that's the idea here. Let's try, try a new strategy. Um, with that being said... Who wants the first one? Drop a D music playing in the background. <laughs> I'll go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right here. So, so we're right here on line eleven three. No, um, eleven three. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we have her ear. I'm get it. Mm -hmm. uh, henu or hen. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, is it just the word for bone? But I don't remember. Is it kesen or kisen or? Uh, it would be, but it's a determinative here because if you look at henu, it doesn't finish in anything yet, um, and it would be highly unusual to have it end in a without a determinative. Mm -hmm. So Henu, uh, so this will be Henu F. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. All right. Then we have U F Reddit Henu F R U. Yeah. Um, Good, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And U then. Do you do you mean? No wait. Is the U? I got the right. I think the word ends. Ooh. Oh, two of upgraded. Thank you, Zoom. Sorry. <laughs> Where did the annotation go? Ute Mineti. That's right. So the 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 Ute ends here and then comes the next word. Yeah, that's right. And what Mineti? Ni Mineti Ni Heru. That's right. Mm-hmm. All right, let's stop here. All right. All right, so we have, so we have here, and, and as for the night, or as, I'm sure it could be, I could be, it could be better, but, and as for the night. Uh, yeah, you're right. So, I mean, um, and as for is completely correct, and we can also just translate it as when in English. But okay. uh, etymologically, you're correct. That's That's what those two words mean. Right. And we have um so we have set redit nachet. This is a causative nachet here. Is this um to hit or to strike uh, nachet? Yeah, so or what redit. else can <laughs> now we're coming to a tricky vocabulary. So what can be what can D be or did um can be a several different things? I thought it was like a causative um and set was like made to hit or hit or strike. Um, yeah, you think it would be strike, but but necht or uh, necht is um, a strong, or in this case, it's actually hard. Okay, see my Egyptian right. Ne 
a hit. Kind of where I can be mighty. Okay, so he means hard. Mm -hmm. So he made hard, uh, and the question would be what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean... Do we call it the male member? <laughs> yes, the male member. There you go. Very nice. <laughs> Not any, but his, yeah. Uh, so, yes. yeah. His male this, member. This one's going to be a dance around kind of session <laughs> for the vocabulary. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so so let me get this straight. So the word hinu, um, hinu here, is this like the Middle Egyptian word hinanin for like phallus or is it similar related to that word or? Oh. There's a Middle Egyptian word for phallus that's um, hin, hinanin. Oh, I did not know that. So then I guess that could be it. <laughs> I mean, while we're on it, why not? Middle Egyptian. That's what I had. I had hinan f is phallus yep let me go with that yeah me too i mean there's there's a whole bunch of different words there's oh my goodness <laughs> there's this mid um yeah mid. Mm -hmm. is a phonetic for for m plus t uh like for example in i think in to investigate it's in there in smith um then there is bach that's why it is in m bach in in front of uh mm -hmm. i think it's just a phonetic in there but yeah that's also and i think that's the only I think that's the only one of the three that survives into Coptic, if I'm not mistaken. I think Bach is still around. Um, so, um, Renu doesn't make it. Um, I don't think that's that's attested in Coptic, to my knowledge. And I'm sure there were more more words. Uh, just like in English, we have a ton of expression. <laughs> um, yeah, for a whole range of, of of connotations. Okay, but so yeah, that's what it is. And okay. he, yeah. And the next one. Is uh, and he put his yeah here we go his um when I has walking legs now Henu <laughs> yeah Henu he put his mm. how do we want to translate that one uh, he put his does anybody have Henu I, and normally I think of it as to haste to hurry something like this but that doesn't make much sense here. Hello. Are we talking about R U? Go again. I'm sorry. Are we talking about R U? No, the <laughs> second, the second Henu. It, why second is henu. it? Uh, why does it have uh, different uh, determinatives at the end? Is it right, the same yeah, word yeah. with a different determinative, or is it something else? A really good question. I don't know about that. I thought same word with different determinative, but I don't know why he would do that. Yeah. Hmm. I thought it was was an action verb here because he he says di henu so. He's making it Renu. I guess he's making it like rush or but let's let's look that up. I am not it's not titles, but all words. Renu, Renu, Renu. Sorry, my bad here. Yeah, all drawings. There we go. That's better. And that's not it. Is it just him? Maybe it's just him. To grow, that's not it. To obstruct, that's not it. To go speedily, that's the one I was thinking about. To go speedily or to rush, um, or just simply maybe to go. And maybe that's it, honestly. And he made it go, and he made it go. Well, where did he make it go? Um, er, yud, something sorry. to separate something or in between, I guess. Er, to separate as a proposition, it could just simply be between. Mm. Made yep. it go between. Where's the text? Here we go. Made it go between menti. What did you have menti, right? Menti and chor. Mm. Because now we need menti. A minute. Is that it? Mm. Here we go. So, yeah. <laughs> this dies. That's right. So I'm assuming that's a dual here with the with the e menti. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
I guess that's the thighs of Horriston. So Lesko does have uh, Dijen as to send. Oh. The the genu or the genis? The Dijen together. Oh, oh, cool. That's in Lesko. That's in Lesko. Yes. Well, makes sense, right? I mean, so that works. I think he sent it between uh, Horace's thighs. Horace's thighs. <laughs> We, we put this very clinically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he worked himself up. <laughs> worked himself up. What's that? Idea. What's that? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah. Well done. I mean, I think that's what the sentence means. Anything on grammar that we need to point out? Right. So if we go back to Nacht again, ah. um, yeah, when I would like, like Chris, I was thinking that that was strike or because that's what I remembered from Middle Egyptian or, you know, some kind of soldier or strong or something like that. That's Did a, that mean just change over time? When that, when that, now it means hard, right? That's, that's, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Amazing. So Nacht is, is a is a, an adjective first of all like like strong or able um that's basically the root here to be strong and coptic is still around as nishti um and it has a few derivatives so there is a word that means victory let's see if i can find that uh, this one here um you'll see there a lot in royal inscriptions basically it's always all or nechto is like um, always talking about about victory and strength and the like, so that's where you're going to see that word a lot. Um, but I think you also have it just as the basic adjective, like strong. Um, and literally, the text is saying he's making it strong. But I guess hard makes more sense in the English context. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Oh, here you go. In demotic, uh, st to be strong, to be hard, to to rescue. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So maybe it gets that 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 hard meaning as time goes on, but the basic meaning is either strong or victorious, if that makes sense. Okay. And let me see. Maybe puissant works better there. That like yeah, the English strong is very hands off, but like it's able right. to do things. Right. 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 Hmm. Uh, okay. That. It's probably Bohairic what I'm writing here. Um, let's do it in English. Yeah, how is this written in Coptic? I'd love to see that. Right. Whoop, ba, ba, ba. Huh. So here it only has in short, um, which must be a qualitative, I'm guessing. Not completely sure. Ah, here, Nasht, I guess. Wait, how does this work now? Ugh. Oh, here's a whole bunch of, of words from that family. Uh, Nusht, become hard. There's way more than I thought. Nusht, strength, violence, in short, hardness, boldness. Um, what else do we have? T in short, to make hard. Can you believe mm. it? It's the word that we yeah, just... Yeah, there you go. Right there. So that's what it is. And here, that's the one I was thinking about, Nashte, which is not strong. Sorry, I was wrong. That is strength, um, um, as it would have to be, because, I mean, the, the final T is preserved, so there must have been something afterwards. So Nashte is just strength. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So, yeah, that family is alive and kicking in, uh, in, in Coptic. Very cool. Um, grammatically, anything else? No, not really, right? So you have a bunch of, of T causatives to make strong, to make hurry or whatever you want to call it, or to send um, prepositional expression. And the whole thing just with you and subject, you and subject. So just basically histor historical narration like we have been having. Can I ask a quick question? Um, can you remind me what that little branch of wood is doing in between the... Uh, Which one? Sorry, the um, there's a branch um, just before the man with a stick. Yeah. Ah, what is that? 
Oh yeah, that's 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 a good one. Um, so you have the n on top, right? Then you have the chet. This is wood, so um, the phonetic value is chet. And then you have a ch, a t, and that's really it. So the whole thing is being read as uh, necht. Um, and so basically, these two guys here are phonetic complements to the wood. Technically, you could write the whole thing. I mean, in an alternative universe, you could just write it as n plus uh, plus chet. Oops. That would already give you all the sound values you need. But because they always like to put phonetic complements there, you have the the uh, and the t as well, um, just to reinforce how it's supposed to be read. But uh, basically, this is a duplication, so to say. The true phonetic values are just these two things. Or theoretically, you could leave this out. But in the Egyptian view of things, that would be boring, I guess. Yes. So the word is just hat. Yeah. And the word wood, I think, is also around for a long time, like she. That that's a, also part of the core vocabulary. Oh, and by the way, this is really nice with these this fun thing that Christian made. If you like type in nicht, it already gives you like you get those two glyphs. A lot of them are essentially mapped onto onto whatever word. If you know what the most common words are that those glyphs are in, like for example, if you want to get the man with a stick, you can also write hui. There it goes. Or you can write nicht. Gives you the same glyph. Um, Kind of neat. You just need to, of course, know what Christian probably had in mind, but that's that's often easy to guess because, uh, yeah, most words are pretty obvious. Like if you want to get the eyes, for example, in the word uh, better to look, there you go. Or if you don't like this one, just click on the space bar and you get the other variant. If you want to cry, it would be rime. So let's see. Is that it? No. Nope. Yeah. Okay, made made a lie out of me. Why? There we go. RM uh, RMI did the trick. So sometimes you have to experiment around a little bit to to see what it would be. This one would get you RMW would get you the fish. So yeah, really love that feature. I also wanted to comment that I think it's very amusing that people get bent out of shape about the actual phallus hieroglyph. I think that's D fifty four. <laughs> Yeah, and like is it is it censored in kids' at phone apps and things like that? And here we have the actual word for phallus, and they're using the bone harpoon determinative t t nineteen, I think it is. Oh, is that what that is? I always map that onto yeah. bone, but I, I never knew what that actually is. That is a, a harpoon. Oh, cool. Kiss, yeah. kiss. So Alan has that as determinative for bone or tube, mm -hmm. both of which work as euphemisms in English. <laughs> Sure. It did occur to me, yes. <laughs> and then you have meat behind it. I'm not going to comment on that, but yeah. Yeah, with the, the, the flesh determinative as well. So yes. just in case you're wondering, you know, what it's made out of. What, what, <laughs> made it so, of. so if you want to draw penises on things, you know, use some imagination. Yeah, yeah, yeah I the... just think it'd be a very good way to engage school children with the love of Egyptian. Probably, probably. Although. <laughs> Oh. See, maybe aware they've censored that glyph in, in several apps, apparently, um, because yes. yeah, maybe, it, it can't be trusted. <laughs> hmm. I think we've milked this sentence to death. Um, <laughs> should we go to the next one? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, that was. I realized that was an more. unfortunate choice of words. Wow. <laughs> wow. Some editing. I, I think lowering the tone video. here. Really. Yeah, I, I think Christian would be proud of you, Aurelio. Yeah, he would be. Yeah. Managed to lower the tone. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a rating on this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thanks very much for this one. Well done. Next one. Should we look at the hieratic? Oh. Jeez. I think we also didn't do the hieratic for the sentence we ended on last week. We could plow through both of those. That. Awesome. Thank you. Good call out. So start from her ear. Her ear. Um, here's the head that is practically impossible to see. Um, but we've looked at that before. It's very different from what you would expect from from uh, from 
from hieroglyphs, from hieroglyphs, you would expect something like this, right? If you if you had to make it from scratch, that's absolutely not what they do. They do something funky where they have some kind of loop here, go down, and then another thing around it, something of that nature. Try to remember how was this again? Was it like this, like that? I'm okay. seeing any annotation if you're making some. Say it again. I'm sorry. You guys seeing some? I can see them. Oh, okay. I see it. They're quite faint, though. I'm lucky. <laughs> Let's have a quick look here. Anybody have the, the glyph number? I mean, it's... I'm always bad at those because I remember everything phonetically. Um, ooh, what are plants again? Here we go. Animals, 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 plants. M3. You got it. That is right. So M3. I had it kind of backwards. Apologies. So the loop is at the top and the this thing is at the bottom. That that T like or Z like thing is at the bottom. I think that's the that's the the fundamental shape, like this, like a like a ladle kind of thing, and then it goes into this loop. Um that's yeah. more and the upper part is almost not drawn in the red part here. Like a line below where it's in black, it's a lot more clear. Oh, let's look at that. Good point. So here we go. Yeah, you can sort of see it here. But even though the bottom part isn't all that well developed, it's really more like yeah. a little thing and then sort of like a T or Z kind of shape at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I had a quick question about the red. Why does he choose to do red every now and then? Is it just to break up the lines or? New sentence. It's basically like, like yeah, break up the lines, so to say. Um, okay. You Since could... it's almost a new paragraph somehow. Yeah, oh. you're right. Like, okay. yeah, you're right, because there's like multiple phrases within one red, red and black block, right? And so like multiple use, for example. Um, so this whenever like a new, new paragraph starts. It's a good way to put it. Other two options would be you could use verse points, especially like poems can have verse points in them, but not only um, poems, school texts, um, when the teacher is trying to make it clear for the student. And sometimes you also just have them in, in literary text. Uh, the other option is you can have a little glyph like, looks like an arm, like that basically, to indicate the, of a, uh, the end of a line, the end of a, of, a, of a sentence. So that's another, I'm not sure if that is more of a full stop than the verse point. The verse point sometimes is more like a comma. And this here is like, I think always when a phrase is over. Um, yeah, I think those are your, your three options how to do punctuation in Egyptian. <laughs> but our friend here only uses the red. I don't think there's a single verse point in the whole thing. So, um, um, ter. here's the ter glyph, which looks almost like a, like a reed leaf, but with an extra lock of hair here on top. Um, re, er, very faint, u, or w, chau, chau, no, rucha, what am I saying? Em rucha, at night. Um, there is a whole article on that night glyph out there where it looks at how it actually evolved over time. Um, hmm. This really looks more like a pot, doesn't it? Like a nu at the bottom, which is also the yeah. shape it later takes. Yeah. So, and it's transcribed lots of different ways. You can kind of pick which version yeah. you want in hieroglyphs. Yeah. All mean the same. And there are some versions which are actually some very popular versions which have like a like this, like looks almost like a like a uh, like lightning, although I've read that's not what it is. I'm I'm actually not sure, but there is this shape. Sometimes they have the little fork at the bottom, like the wasp scepter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go into the interpretation, but I do know that there's like entire literature out on that, how that, what that sign means and how that's related to cosmology and whatnot or mythology. But here it looks more like little, little, little nu at the bottom. Not exactly because nu would just be this, I suppose. This here has like an extra, extra thingies. Okay, what else? You, ut, 
Well, I was going to say, like, it looks like a new plot, but the way they draw the star, you kind of end up with the same number of strokes in the same places, so it might just be a very cursive star. I think so the same. Maybe yeah. that's some of the confusion. That makes Because they don't do the star like we do, where you cross over yourself. They do sort of each of the points individually. Mm -hmm. Right. True. Yeah, very true. They don't do that. You're right. It's more like a... Wait, how do you do this again? Like, like down and then in and then, yeah. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah. Or is it? Or is it? Wait, am I? Am I? Am I wrong? Is it actually a, a line like this across the middle? I don't recall anymore. I think it's it... usually two separate strokes for the upper arms. Oh, okay, cool. But... Let's see what else. U two sesh with a nice line in the middle. Then our our lying mummy. However, that was done exactly. For some reason, there's there's something under the bed always, which is not not there in the hieroglyphs. Um, no idea what chamber that pot. Perhaps it's a chamber pot. Oh, I, I was thinking <laughs> it's the book of the dead or something. Oh, that's that's maintaining the high tone. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. I wonder if they found one in in, in a tomb. Like, is that included? They just in, in like Victorian uh, politeness, just don't mention it. Are they? Are they? I don't know. That's a good point. I've never heard of one, but I've never. Heard. I mean, you I think you need one. everything for the afterlife. But there is Tutankhamun's condom. Um, there is indeed one. Really? Hey. Um, <laughs> so that exists. You would think there should be a chamber pot. We're finding out all things, that, sorts of things today, don't we? So, Sen, um, Iu, Sejer, just going to pass on as if nothing happened. Our mummy again. Sesh in three parts, as always. Sesh, Shes, I don't know, whatever that the phonetic transcription of this is. Um, man with a stick. M, Pa, Sa, Tu. The Tu is being added after the fact, as you can clearly see. You missed that. Her ir em gerich, um, which is still gorich in the Buhari pronunciation. Uh, het, here's our star again. This looks more star like this time. Um, sun, huge determinative stroke. Iu, sutech, um, bird on a stick. To give, necht. Just talked about that. Man with stick, huge ch. Now this one here. Have we talked about the plant before? Yeah, that one looks remarkably like a like a her in that hen the uh, henen word. But the bone determinative looks to me very similar to that. Bone determinative. Well, let's look at both. Um, and I'll take glyph numbers. So the hen should be somewhere in the same category we're just in. Should be in the M somewhere. Yeah. An M2. Mm. Wait. M2, please. M2, yes. Now that's the arm I was talking about a moment ago, by the way. But I don't want that. I want the M2. There we go. So this is what I was expecting, this this little thingy here. Um, how do we get to what he's showing there? We're 19th dynasty, so we should be around here. Wow. That's quite a stretch, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Not in a million years would I guess that was Hen, if I came yeah. across it. Mm -hmm. Huh. And here it is again somewhere. Here. Where it's recognizably the same sign, but it's, yeah. Looks nothing. It doesn't look like any of those examples. It doesn't. I mean, the whole top part is missing. It's just the bottom loop. I wouldn't have known what that is if, if he didn't transcribe it, although it makes sense from context. Hmm, okay. 
So maybe that's some kind of idiosyncrasy. Is there a, an alternative, Cliff? No, no. Any kind of studies, uh, like scribes from document to document. So the variance in this symbol that we're seeing, as opposed to other symbols, what, do you see what I'm saying? Like sometimes yeah. in textual criticism, they'll say this scribe is a, is a good scribe or this scribe does lots of the spellings. Is there anything uh, like that in Egyptology? Mm, good point. Although honestly, this scribe has been pretty good compared to well, some. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I've only seen informal things where, you know, such and such a papyrus is clearly in the same hand as such and such a papyrus, but it's always just like straight out of someone's memory. I don't think I've ever seen anything systematic. Okay. Oh, I see. Trying to trace particular scribes by their handwriting or. There is something there. There is an article called The Scribal Repertoire of, of Scribe So and So. Where they actually oh. all the text that could be could be assigned to a single, of course, it's all a new kingdom. Um, especially like in the Dale Medina context. There, there are some cases, just because we have so much stuff from Dale Medina, where you can actually assign it all to like one hand or at least one scribal school, to your point. Um mm. cool. so, but this one here, I have no idea. Yeah. Huh. Okay, I think I'll just pass on that one. I don't know. It's just what he does. It does look a little bit like the sign, but... Benu, the bone. What's up with that? It's T19. T19? Oh, yes. Because T19. It... Thank you. There it is. Harpoon, like you said. Hmm. So this makes sense. That's what you would expect, right? Um, stays that way. That's not what we have. That's <laughs> <laughs> really not what we have. I mean, I see the I see the the flesh. I do not see the half one. I also don't see what that little thing on top is. See that? Yeah. Can I just say thank you again for uh, those of you that have put this together for us? That's awesome. And then I guess thank you to the scholars that were able to figure out what that was in the first place. <laughs> I get figured out. I tend to agree with that. Yeah. No, this is great. When we're done with this, we have to decide what we want to do with it. Um, but I think it's a discussion for another day. Okay, doc. No, I have nothing. Anybody has something on this? I don't. I mean, this is clearly the U, the W. And then here comes something's happening. I wonder if Gardner has, has a note on that. Nope. No note. Okay. And I would say let's let this rest. So so I mean, in volume two of Muller, there's a couple where they sort of flip the bottom over. Mm. So you have the leg coming down a little bit like uh, the depth. Mm. And then they have two spikes coming off of that. And it looks like maybe the scribe did that, but then left off the two spikes. But I don't know what that little wing on top is. Like, is that supposed to be the flag on top of the the harpoon? Mm -hmm. but, Maybe, huh? And the little smudge in front of it, that must be part of it too, because it's not, I mean, we see the ooh very clearly, and then there's that the little... Ooh, but there's somehow a that, thing there. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be part of it. Yeah. I agree with you guys. That's... Hmm. So maybe it's faded. Maybe that is 
the hooks, see what we're seeing on here, all the hooks that go into the bottom. Uh, okay. That's the little smudge that we're seeing after who. Yeah, so there it is. Down at the, in the 20th dynasty, you see some that look a little bit more like ours. Let me go back. You mean this one, right? There we go, yeah. 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 So if you... Like the, you get the that two bar strips shape down. that we're all recognizing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. SVG, oh, look at that. We could do more with this than I knew. That's fun. I mean, yeah, that's probably the closest we have. Um, guess it's not going to work, is it? No, can't. Oh, well. But yeah, you're right. That's somewhat similar. But cool. Should we bring the line home? So D, the F leads over into that. Lots of strokes on top of this H. Um, then our our plant again. N, new, W, leg or yeah, the, the leg thingy here. Um, with a lot of fantasy, with a lot of imagination. This is uh, these my <laughs> legs as well. R, you, that's an interesting one. We should probably look at a little animal. Um, what would that be? So, guys, I think it's it exactly one sentence today. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, E9. And while we're at it, I'm also going to bring in the cow for a reason. So, <laughs> um, this is one of those things that looks nothing like what you would think it would look like, right? So, nope. antelope, antelope, is it? Yeah, antelope. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, yeah, but I thought we had decided it was something else. It's uh, a, it's a bubalis. Bubalis. Oh yes. Let's now see it in my mind. It's a bubalis. <laughs> told us before. And for some reason, the bubalis sort of looks like a. Like the right angle with um with an angle. Yeah. And before you think that's completely crazy, take a look at the the bull. Wow. And the bull is sort of like the opposite. Um also highly standardized. Essentially you have the neckline and then something else. And then only later they nah, not even. So that sort of looks like the reverse of our bubali somewhat. <laughs> For what it's worth. Hey, wait, what is going on here? I clicked on the wrong thing. No, I was just, oh, I missed the beginning. So the beginning actually looks looks like an animal. There you go. Yeah, the beginning, it looks like an animal. And then it gets stylized to, as you say, the opposite of a bull. The corners on the other side. This is how that works. So you just first draw like the head, and then you do this thing. And then this becomes this giant, gigantic, um, um, like right angle, and the rest just becomes, oh, that's how that works. Mm. That it's like the ear and the nose to that big corner, and there's a squiggle for the body. Wow, cool, huh? Yeah. Babies, they're all head. It's true. <laughs> oh my god. Should we go back to a text? <laughs> I think the rest we know, right? There's a, a squished in D. There's this highly, um, nah, how would I say that? The men basically very, very curly. Um, T, you just have to know that that's what it is. And yeah, the leg. This year again, also apparently this year belongs to the, um, to the meat cliff, the little squiggle on top. An N and then a long horse. And that's it. Five minutes. Well, I've got a burning question yes, that's sir. not related to the line we just read, but I was wondering about chorus is written with the falcon usually, except when you get to line, oh, where is it? 
a future line. I want to say it's either. Let's see. At seven, end seven. of line seven, I think. Yeah. Suddenly, he gets written with the, in my mind, the web wawet, the the way glyph. Mm -hmm. When did that happen? <laughs> What's that all That's about? That's happened before. I think he's I done that before in this text a couple of times, but it's rare. Okay. It's spelled phonetically. Oh. It's her. I mean, it is her, but it's, oh. yeah, it's strange when he does that. Okay. I'd forgotten the, um, the phonetics of it. I just always associated that with Webwawet or the way. Right, or with way in general, right? But, yeah. Um, ugh. They probably have it under Heru. They probably have it under Heru. Let's see. And then it's probably under her dot U. So everything else would be too simple. Let's see. So phonetically, it's Del Horus. It's just, it's like whether the Seth, Seth animal is sitting up or standing or lying yeah, down, sure, whether sure, he uses yeah. EU with the quail chick or EU with the curl. Like there's constant variations, and it'd be nice to have a theory why that is. Right. <laughs> Or if it means anything in particular. I guess this is the word, right? Like huru beside, apart from. I thought it meant away, far. I thought the the name was supposed to be the far one. Like, or at least that's the. Oh. I'm not sure if that is modern reinterpretation or if there's any place to actually back that up. I mean, hieroglyph is the province of. Um, sorry, hieroglyphs. Um, etymology is the province of bullshit. Uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it just is. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Far. Hmm. There's wa. There's wa. I think apart, sorry. like apart, is spelled um, uh, her. Yeah, you go. Hey, you were saying apart is spelled what? Apart, also the same, her. Hmm. And I think this, this is it. Um, to be far from, to remove yourself on. That was the one I was thinking of, her. And so you can use that for his name. So I guess the theory that Horus could mean the far away one is based on the fact that you that you can also spell it like that. Um, so I guess some Egyptians felt that proximity. That's why you would spell it sometimes like that. But to Ralph's point, as to why one versus the other... Who knows? Oh, look at that. To fly up to the sky. That fits too, doesn't it, Curry? Sure. Oh. Soros is flying around a lot. Well. What do you guys think? Should we break here? Yep. Yep. I think it's good. Yeah, this is good. And a three minute end run. <laughs> Two minute end run. Okay. <laughs> Well, then, thanks so much. And we're going to continue the X rated session uh, the next time in two weeks. <laughs> all right. Wouldn't thanks that be great? Right? I didn't have for Thanksgiving. I know. No, the horror thanks of all this. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's a Thanksgiving conversation. <laughs> okay, no, I'm sorry for the US. And it gets weirder, it gets so much weirder and so <laughs> much grosser, too. This is yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Right. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Great Thank session. You. See you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.